we will only be continue to the technical session of the Life of Sciences, the 15th International Research Conference of General Sechon, Patala Religious University, themed Economic Revival, National Security and Sustainability to Advancement of Science, Technology, and Innovation. You are here for the technical session one, which will be on. To start the session's proceeding, I cordially invite the chairperson of the session, Dr. Sivanandan Sarsanand Raja, accompanied by Dr. D.K. Vimala Ratna, to take their seats on the stage. Without the 
coordination and support of various professionals, it is impossible to do research and development in this multidisciplinary profession. So you need more collaborations and networking and more support from various professionals and institutes, mainly hospitals, universities and international organizations to enhance and develop various projects in this field. You cannot run this program within a short, uh, narrow environment. So with that overall uh, you know, the expectation, I would like to give some house housekeeping for this uh, uh, presentations. So <coughs> the presentations, after eight minutes, uh, there will be a red light uh, indication. And then after 10 minutes, uh, there is a bell for one, one time. And then after 12 minutes, uh, the bell for twi uh, twice. Uh, so please make sure the others or the um, presenters uh, to finish the talk within the stipulated time frame. Uh, with that uh, small housekeeping rules, I would also like to introduce the panel of examiners or judges today. Dr. Sanjay Abhinayaka, the consultant radiologist at Department of Radiology, Desoisa Hospital for Women. And Dr. Sanjeeva Gunasagara, consultant clinical apologist at Akaksha Hospital, Magaragama. Dr. Hasandi Jala, consultant oncologist, University Hospital at KDU. Please welcome all these judges with your claps. So let me start with the first talk, uh, Assessment of Islands Dose in Interventional Cardiology by Ms. Vikrama Singh. And there are so many influencing factors on 
iris asymmetry as well. There are operator parameters such as body mass, in, body mass index, height of the operator, distance from the isocenter to the operator, and uh, there are so many factors and different usage of shield, leg shield, and uh, there are exposure parameters such as kilowatt hp, peak, milliampere circles, different exposure angles, uh, usage of a, an automatic exposure control, and if, if they, these parameters can be influenced on the uh, eye loss metric as well. Therefore, it is necessary to determine the radiation doses for the eye lenser in cat labs due to this higher sensitivity of eye lenses, and it is necessary to determine the influence of different influencing parameters on the eye lens. So our aim of this study is to investigate the occupational islands doses and determine the correlation between the direct idosymmetric values and dose values obtained from the supplementary dosimeters for interventional cardiology in Sri Lanka. This is my methodology. This study was conducted as a quantitative study. This study received the clearance from the uh, KPU Faculty of Medicine and National Hospital Sri Lanka. I used 150 procedures including coronary angiogram, percutaneous coronary interventions, implantation procedures and electrophysiological procedure, procedures within one month of period. So uh, any procedure uh, other than the coronary angiogram, PCI, implantation and electrophysiology were excluded from our study. These are the radiation detectors are used to determine the radiation doses for the operator, capital A indicates the island's dosimeter, it is HP3 detector, which simulate, which gives the radiation dose uh, similar to the 3 mm tissue thickness. Uh, so it uh, simulates the tissue thickness of the island, so it gives very accurate dose value for the island. Capital B indicates the HP0.07 detector, it gives the, uh, it is a physical quantity of HP0.07, gives the tissue uh, radiation doses equivalent to the tissue thickness of 0.07 millimeter and C dosimeter is uh, HP 10 dosimeter it gives the radiation dose uh, uh, equivalent to the tissue thickness of uh, 10 millimeter. So these B and C dosimeters were used to obtain the thyroid color doses. So I followed two methods to obtain the I dose values. First method is direct IDOS metric uh, assessment and the second method is indirect assessment. Uh, these all these dosimeters are real time dosimeters. If the operator is not wearing red eye goggles or spectacles, I place this direct eye dosimeter near to the left outer canthus of the eye to obtain the direct eye dose values. And uh, to obtain thyroid color doses in indirect assessment, I place the HP 10 dosimeter and HP 0.07 detector on the left side of the neck above the thyroid collar. If the operator is wearing red eye goggles or thyroid, thy, uh, sorry, red eye goggles or spectacles, I place my uh, eye detector, eye dose detector on the arm of the uh, red eye goggles or spectacles to obtain direct eye dose assessment. I follow the second method to obtain the thyroid collar doses. So other influencing parameters, uh, as I mentioned earlier, operator, patient and exposure parameters were noted. Data entry analysis were conducted using Origin Pro and PSS software. All collected data were assessed for normality with Shapiro wealth test. Pearson's correlation was applied to assess association between the direct hydrosymmetric values and loss values obtained from supplementary dosimeter. A p-value less than 0.05 was considered as statistically significant. These are my results. Uh, I obtained mean HP3 islands dose for the operator A and operator B. Uh, mean HP10 thyroid color dose for the operator A and operator B. Mean HP0.07 thyroid color dose for the operator A and operator B. These uncertainties and these ranges. Operator A received annual effective islands dose uh, as 8.6058 millisieverts per year and operator B received annual effective dose of 4.8361 millisieverts per year. The dose for the operator B is less than the operator A because operator B performed few procedures compared to the operator A. Uh, this is the results of my Pearson's correlation. I obtained very good correlations between the direct idosymmetric values and dose values obtained from thyroid color dosimeters. 
So in this discussion, according to the results of our study, both operator A and operator B receive a lesser effective violence dose, uh, which compared to our recommended ICRP dose limit 20 millisieverts per year. And a similar study conducted in 2020 using 71 interventional cardiology procedures also received a dose, uh, effective dose value 3.49 millisieverts uh, per year, which is also less than the recommended ICRP dose limit. And based on the results of our study, operator A received statistically significant, uh, very good linear relationship between the HP10 thyroid color dose values and HP3 islands exposure. And operator A received a strong positive correlation, linear correlation between the HP0.07 dose values, thyroid color dose values, and HP3 islands dose values which was statistically significant. Operator B received a statistically significant strong positive gene association between HP10 thyroid color dose and island dose. Operator B received a moderate positive gene association between HP0.07 thyroid color dose and island dose, but it was not statistically significant. And another similar study conducted in 2014 experimented to explore this relationship between the islands dose and the thyroid color exposure for cardiologists. A satisfactory relationship was obtained across the HP0.07 doses and neck color doses corresponding to the HP3 doses. So limitations of our study, there were difficulties to maintain same position of the dosimeter for each operator. There can be slight variations in the dosimeter position as the measurements were conducted in BC cardiology departments. The number of examinations made by each operator was less. Therefore, incorporating a higher number of interventional cardiology cases will provide an accurate dose, dose estimation for each operator. So in conclusion, I can say that this study showed both operators, operator A and operator B, received lesser island effective doses uh, compared to the recommended dose by the ICRP. This study also received a good association between HP3 islands dose, HP10 dose, thyroid color dose, and HP0.07 thyroid color dose. Uh, the placement of the meters on the portion of the trunk may be possibly be a significant factor in assessment of islands exposure for analytical processes. The finding of this analysis will be, will be extremely beneficial for the medical staff who work at interventional cardiology departments. This research will fill the gap of unavailability of data regarding the islands and effective dose measurement in Sri Lanka. So these are my references. Uh, this work is fully funded by the Research Grant Committee of KDU Sri Lanka. And then I would like to pay my gratitude to my supervisors and Department of Radiography and Radiotherapy, FHSK. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Vikramasinghe. Now the talk is open for questions and comments. Yes, sir. Interventional cardiologists, they perform very uh, complex and very long durational procedures compared to the other, inter other interventional procedures in cardiology. Uh, cardiac cath lab. So that's why I selected this area because the procedures are very complicated and it takes long duration. How do you think your, uh, your practice or study will help the current practice in your body? Yes, sir. It will definitely give a help because the islands, islands is the highest sensitivity region of the body to the uh, radiation. So if you exceed the island's uh, dose limit recommended by the ICRC, there can be radiation induced island cataract developed to the operator within a later period of two to three years. So it is necessary to determine the island's doses for the uh, cardiology practice, in cardiology practice. Just ask, uh, can you remind us of the overall objective of your study? Yeah, overall objective is to assess the islands for the interventional cardiology in Sri Lanka. So, so you are deriving the data from looking at 
function that affects the human brain and leading to significant effects on patient health as well as their well-being. Epilepsy can be started in any state of life and its occurrence frequently. In epilepsy, symptoms of epilepsy may be varying according to the brain region it is affected. Some of them are loss of consciousness, loss of awareness, unusual behavior or sensation likewise. So in epilepsy, it can be featured by repetitive seizures due to the disturbances of electrical activity between brain cells. Based on the seizure patterns, Epilepsy can be defined as an individual having at least two unprovoked or quick seizures which are more than 24 hours apart. For that, it is important to stop the seizure from repeating more than one time so that identifying causes of epilepsy seizure is very important. If these causes of seizure are not treated immediately, it will be lead to the epilepsy. So, uh, this is the uh, types of epilepsy. The, Types of epilepsy can be categorized according to the seizure types. Uh, the seizure, seizure is the excessive excitation of nerve cells in the brain. Uh, according to the seizure types, we can uh, categorize the epilepsy according to genetic factors, structural changes of the brain. It may be acquired by genetic changes, the metabolic, the immune responses, infectious, or the unknown condition. According to seizure, epilepsy can be categorized focal, generalized epilepsy, generalized and focal epilepsy, and unknown. Many seizures are symptomatic and asymptomatic of the idiopathy. Symptomatic is developed after, after a particular incident, and the idiopathic means it means developed without any related events. And in here, the focal epilepsy means this excitation of nerve cells in the brain affecting one part of the brain, that is focal epilepsy. And the generalized epilepsy means the effect of the uh, excitation of nerve cells in the uh, whole of throughout the brain, it is the generalized epilepsy. And the generalized and focal epilepsy means is the excitation of nerve cells that occurs in one part of the brain and it spreads throughout the whole brain. It is the generalized and unknown epilepsy. And the unknown condition also can be affect for the uh, epilepsy. It is also known as epilepsy syndrome. So epilepsy can be uh, with the uh, seizure or the any causes or unknown condition. So many efforts have been made during last few decades to map the structural brain changes in epilepsy. More specifically, two methods, voxel-based morphometry and tensile-based morphometry have been extensively used to extract voxel-level morphological information of the epileptic brain. The results found to data using the VBM and TBM in epilepsy shows many similarities and differences. Therefore, a direct comparison of structural brain changes in epilepsy based on BBM and TBM required to understand how different methods are sensitive in detecting structural brain changes in epilepsy. So these are the objectives that were used for our study. First only to detect gray matter volume and white matter volume changes in epilepsy using voxel-based morphometry. And second one is to detect gross volume changes in epilepsy using tensor-based morphometry. Finally, you perform the conjunction analysis to compare the results taken uh, from gray matter volumes and white matter volumes detected by BBM and TBM. Then for the methodology, we use Department of Radiology of National Hospital Sri Lanka as a study setting. For the study population, we use all the consecutive T1 weighted 3D pre control bear MRI study. For the for the collected data, we use the Philips Ingenia 3 Tesla machine. In that machine, we this 3D sequence known as the MPL sequence, and we uh, collected the epilepsy patient as confirmed as a previously as epilepsy, and we collected data during the August 2021 to February 2022. And sample size we take all 91 samples, and from that 46 are healthy controls and 45 are epilepsy patients between age of 15 to 60 years. Uh, as we discussed earlier, voxel-based morphometry is a fully automated technique which segmented information from individual brain into different tissue types. Different tissue types mean we can divide the brain into gray matter, white matter, and CSA. This computing voxel-based controls concentration of volume. Intensive-based morphometry is a methodological alternative to detect cross-volume changes without computing volume information separated from different tissue types. For our study, we use MATLAB, SPM12, and CAT12 as a research tool. To analyze the anatomical variation, we use VBM and TBM. In VBM, voxel-based morphology, firstly, we firstly specially normalize the individual brains into the standard template. Then, the segmented the brain into different tissue types, white matter, gray matter, and CSF. 
and computing the voxel length concentration and volume. In our study, we use the voxel level volume changes. In tensor desmorphometry, allows the deformation fields to normalize the grain to standard template. In the charcoal being determined, includes the information of stretching as well as shearing and rotation. This also can be known as a shrinkage and expansion of the grain. This is the whole process that we use for our study. We simply take the T-violated MRI data and we perform BBM and TBM studies separately as we discussed earlier. Then spatially move smoothing and finally perform the statistical analysis. For the statistical analysis, we use the univariate analysis. It was performed the two sample t tests was carried out for BBM gray matter volume, BBM white matter volume and TBM cross volume separately. For that, we use the age, gender, and TIV as a covariant. Uh, for but uh, the TBM, we didn't use the TIV as a covariant, and we use TIV as an additional covariant. So we presented the uncorrected result in the family vascular of PEP less than 0.001. So this is the, our final results. We found the widespread volume reduction in gray matter, white matter, and rosolium changes in epileptic brains compared to the healthy control covering both hemispheres. These figures illustrated the areas that the volume reduction we can identify. The uh, gross volume reduction is the pain. This is the density greater than epilepsy mean. How much reduction is affecting the patient's human brain when compared to the healthy control? This red color area shows the uh, regions that affecting the human brain. These gross volume reductions are observed in the regions of the cerebellum, middle occipital region, and the middle temporal area. This is the gray matter volume reduction, same as before, is uh, how much volume reduction affecting the epilepsy brain when compared with the healthy control. This red color area, the bilateral gray matter volume reduction is found in the cerebellum and the middle temporal gyres. In addition to that, the unilateral gray matter reduction is found in the left occipital, right parahippocampal, right parahippocampal, left superior frontal and left insular region. In here, this is the white matter volume reduction, uh, same as uh, how much reduction in epilepsy patients. Apart from the gray matter findings, this study was also able to distinguish white matter volume reductions in cerebellum. Compared to the cerebellum, slight reductions of white matter in frontal, occipital, and temporal radius were also reported. So this is the conjunction analysis. We use uh, the uh, comparison between the uh, gray matter and white matter volume changes, volume reduction, using the BBM TBM study. First figure shows that the uh, comparison between BBM gray matter and TBM gray matter. In here, the red color shows the BBM gray matter volume reduction, and the green color shows the TBM gray matter volume reduction. In second figure shows the comparison between BBM white matter and TBM white matter. It's also red color is BBM white matter, and red color, red color shows the TBM white matter. Is, uh, we can see the similar area and different area that affecting the human brain using both two methods. So in this study, we found both similarities and differences of results found by different methods. We believe that these differences could be explained by methodological properties or their sensitivities to detect different structural information of the brain. As the conclusion of the study, although both methods detected widespread, some structural changes, there are similarities and differences in gray matter and white matter findings. As we showed earlier, the, in the conjunction analysis, we can see the uh, same color area and the different color areas to see the uh, white brain, same similarities and differences in the brain. We believe that these differences could be explained by methodological properties or their sensitivity to detect different structural information of the brain. Uh, these are the uh, references that are we used for our study. So I convey my sincere gratitude to my research supervisor, Sir Dr. Vasana Adriyarachi, for the greatest support and the guidance from the beginning of this study. And special thanks to consultant radiologist Dr. Aruna Pallavatha, radiologist in Sathasha Hospital Sri Lanka, who kindly and voluntary support to this work. All the other radiologists of the National Hospital of Sri Lanka provided continuous support for these studies and the co-authors of our study. Thank you for your guidance and for your support for your study. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ms. Jasper. One more comment from myself. So why do you use univariate analysis? Because you are trying to 
see the differences and similarities, why can't you use multivariate analysis? Because uh, we perform the uh, only perform the VBM and TBM study to detect the structural changes of the brain. Uh, we want to compare the uh, how the VBM and TBM separately uh, affect the human brain in the in the reduction of the volume changes in the brain. Thanks, but you can also consider multivariate. So that's a separate. Okay. And it's a separate issue for discussion later. So the floor is open for questions. What is the criteria for your uh, sample selection? Uh, sir, uh, as an inclusion criteria, uh, we use the age limit 15 to 60 years because uh, less than 15 years may be a, a not developed the brain properly, and after 60 years, may be a, a volume reduction or the any atrophic or the any condition can be affected the patient brain. And uh, we exclude the patient with the epilepsy. Uh, sorry, uh, one. First related epilepsy patients for the healthy control and uh, patients with any other neurological condition, we exclude the, that patients. Uh, and uh, we use uh, as a right handed patient as the uh, we all are the previously confirmed epidural diagnosis as epilepsy from National Hospital Sri Lanka by two radiologists in the National Hospital Sri Lanka. What were the samples max certified and match? Yeah, we all get all the same. You mentioned that in your methodology. I show you my Okay, so let's get. Sorry, uh, uh, just to uh, out of interest, uh, in your uh, on your diagram, you showed that uh, where the grey matter and the white matter volume changes. It looks like on the pictures you showed that the. Uh, the, the, the VBM, TBM difference is more pronounced in the grey matter rather than the white matter. Is that something you observe? Uh, yeah, we observe uh, Especially uh, we take both three methods to detect uh, what area is more, uh, more prone to affect in the epilepsy patients. We detect that the grey matter is uh, the area which affects the more in the epilepsy patients rather than white matter. Then even the difference is more pronounced in the grey matter. Yes. Anyway, okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, please. Are they on active treatment or are they observing? Uh, they, uh, they are active persons. Uh, they, for the treatments. Yeah. Treatment. Uh, they, they do not take it. Uh, initially diagnosed as epilepsy. For, uh, they perform the first thing, perform the MRI scan. Before the treatments, before the treatment, this they are initially perform the MRI scan to diagnose as epilepsy. They are also previously diagnosed as epilepsy. So after that, we perf uh, the patients perform the epile MRI scan to confirm that. So how long has this patient been diagnosed? Like he is a 50 year old patient. So at least we perform the retrospective study. So we don't uh, didn't use the uh, patient's history for the study. Uh, we hope to perform the uh, prospective study to read the their history. Yes. Any questions for the audience? Because it's like the voxel level concentration volume changes in comparison between voxel level, the TBM is the total gross volume changes in epileptic brain, so not only epileptic in the brain, it's going to take the gross volume changes, but VBM, we can take the uh, voxel level morphological changes. Uh, uh, yeah, we can use the uh, SPM structural brain morphometry uh, for the uh, structural changes of the brain. Uh, image processing, we use the SPM uh, uh, software 
to uh, run the SPQL and capture toolboxes. From that, we perform the uh, use the BB distribution and the health control separately. Health control separately, and then we take the type of format image and we perform the uh, transfer the liquid format. Processing time. Uh, for the uh, first time, it take, uh, time, take some time. Uh, Sometimes you stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I expect, yeah. Uh, first of all, I expect uh, that I support uh, the what Sh uh, Shiva said that because uh, this is an ongoing project. Because as this is a uh, undergraduate study, we stop that. Uh, yeah, we stop that uh, at the level of innovative analysis. You, you pointed out why you are not doing this material and that means that's a huge, I mean, another level, okay? Yeah. It means that we can go up to the, the, the computer aid, aid a diagnosis as well. Okay. So that's the second step. And regarding this one, uh, usually it takes about two and three minutes. Uh, if you use that uh, the software, it's all can do it, but if you use the free server, it takes one day or something. That is the real answer. Yeah, my comment was for the further studies, not for this study, but I'm just suggesting. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Daswata. Thank you for your good presentation. So, our, our next speaker is Mr. Senaratna. He talk about an approach to establish local diagnostic reference level for coronary angiography procedures in Sri Lanka. The floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Good morning, all of you. I am Hasalan Sajid Senarapna from Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Sir General Sir John Kotalagale, Defense University. Uh, this is my outline. The motivation for this study, uh, there is no such established DRS found in the literature in Sri Lanka related to intervention and procedures. The word cath lab is derived from the cardiac catheterization laboratory. Uh, there are two main types of procedures done in cardiac catheterization laboratory. Uh, those are diagnostic procedures and therapeutic procedures. Uh, diagnostic procedures are coronary angiograms, ventriculograms, iotograms, and for uh, therapeutic procedures, angioplasty procedures, and uh, percutaneous aortic valve replacement, and uh, other uh, electrophysiological procedures. And uh, when it comes to the radiation exposure in cat, it is somewhat high related to the other imaging modalities because of the, all the staff personnel and uh, patient also and the uh, other doctors, consultants, nurses are in the cat lab. Uh, in, we get uh, real-time imaging with use of fluoroscopy and the exposure time is somewhat high related to the other imaging modalities. Uh, when it comes to the uh, dose reference level, dose reference levels are not specific for individual patient it derived as a result of comprehensive analysis and the interpretation of the exposure values from several patients and uh, as the ICRP recommendations if we are establishing uh, institu institutional or facility DRA we should establish the 15th percentile that means median of the data set and when it comes to the regionally and nationally dose reference levels we sh uh, should establish the 75th percentile of the data. Uh, these are the radiation metric data uh, we are using. Kerma uh, area product and dose area product both are same and we can use apart from that the fluoroscopic time for the DRL and most of the published research are using dose area product and Kerma area product. Uh, it's somewhat complex to establishing DRL for interventional procedures because of the following uh, cases, there is anatomical difference in the patient to patient and uh, there are some lesion characteristics and procedural complications are occur while uh, procedure, uh, such as catheter engage problem. 
and these are the objectives of my research. The main objective was to establish a station specific DRL for coronary angiogram procedures in Sri Lanka and uh, general objectives are to estimate the patient radiation dose during coronary angiogram procedures and to evaluate the correlation among these factors, fluoroscopic time, a total image statement and dose area product with the patient effective dose. And finally, to evaluate the cumulative dose area product for coronary angiograms in terms of two C arm units. Uh, this is the methodology. Uh, this study is an experimental quantitative study. Uh, a total of 325 cases we considered. One, uh, there were uh, two separate C arm units in study at the uh, machine number one. We get the 189 procedures, and for the machine two, we consider the 136 procedures uh, in four months, and we include only coronary angiography procedures uh, because of the uh, most recently and frequently done procedure in cath lab is the coronary angiograms, uh, and. Uh, between the age of uh, 20 years and 80 years old patients and we exclude all the uh, coronary angiography procedures done to the CAPG patients as well as we exclude the uh, coronary angiography procedures encountering catheter engaged problems and these are the study tool we are using. Uh, they are the two CM machines, both are uh, same with, uh, Philips and Philips Allura Parity machine and Philips Asurian machine. Uh, as I mentioned before, in here we are using only, uh, considered only the only uh, coronary angiography procedures. Uh, following param parameters are extracted from the database, the cumulative air therma, cumulative dose area product, total fluoroscopic time, and total images taken, and total views taken, and patient age. Uh, this is the calculation uh, we get to calculate the patient estimated effective dose, uh, the Brambilla et al. 2017 published research. Uh, they use the same uh, equation. The equation is effective dose equal to dose area product into dose conversion factor, dose area product to effective dose in coronary angiograms. Uh, the dose conversion factor does not depend on the patient metric data, such as height, weight, BMI of the patient. And we analysis, analyze the data using SPSS version 26. These are the findings. These are the respective DRLs for both machines. Uh, there is a significant difference between both machines. And we have to find so what are the reasons for significant difference in those reference cells for both machines. Uh, according to uh, Published data, uh, published research, Pantos et al. in 2019. The amount of radiation uh, produced depends on the several parameters uh, such as uh, physician experience and the uh, patient condition and fluoroscopy equipment facility. And we have to uh, find some new reason to relate the cath lab. And they are using uh, different uh, frame rates uh, such as 30. FPS and 15 FPS. FPS is the frame per second. And uh, the magnification levels of the both machines were different. Uh, 20 centimeter focal distance for the machine 1. And there is uh, 19 centimeter focal distance for the machine 2. And uh, we can see there is a uh, in machine 2 uh, focal distance is somewhat. Uh, Reduce and uh, this can be another reason to uh, increase the several several for the machine two. And uh, finally, we calculate the patient mean effective dose is uh, 3.567 millisievert. And these are the correlations we found. Cumulative outcome mouse patient effective dose for the machine one. Uh, there is a positive correlation. And this is the total fluoroscopic time was patient effective dose for the machine. And this is total images taken was for the patient effective dose for the machine one. Same parameters for the uh, machine two. Cumulative air therma was patient effective dose. And the total fluoroscopic time was patient effective dose. And the total images taken was patient effective dose for the machine two. 
this is the summary of correlation. We can see uh, in the machine uh, one and two both uh, positive correlation they are between cumulative outcome was patient effective dose and moderately correlation between total proscopy time was patient effective dose and uh, less uh, correlation, positive correlation between total images taken was patient effective dose. Uh, because of the significant difference of the dose area product, we have to conduct man weekly test for dose area product comparison. Uh, there is a significant difference uh, between uh, those established DRS. And the final conclusion, uh, as shown here, we uh, established these dose separance values for the uh, selected 2CM units. And the maximum and minimum readings are shown here for the both machines. And uh, we found there is a significant correlation between cumulative aircoma, total chloroscopic time, and total images taken with the patient effective dose. And we calculated the uh, patient mean effective dose as uh, 3.561 millisiever. These are the recommendations of my research. And the accuracy of this research can be improved, improved uh, if we are considering the patient parametric data, weight, height, body mass. Uh, it, uh, that was a limitation factor, factor to us due to uh, encounter due to the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, this dose reference level that we can include, uh, increase the reliability and the accuracy if we are using uh, increase the population of our study and uh, there are approximately 15 cat labs, uh, 15, 16 cat labs around Sri Lanka if we continue this study with available cat steps in Sri Lanka and we finally we can establish a national DRL level. These are the references. And I would like to thank uh, my uh, supervisors, uh, Dr. R. Vijita, Senior Lecturer, Department of Radiography and Radiotherapy, Satur Horadigala, Chief Radiographer at Central Army Health Center, and Mr. Ramakrishna Guru Sir, uh, Lecturer in Department of Radiography and Radiotherapy, and Pragit. Mr. Baghdad, Mr. Sohan, and the Dhanush Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Senor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Uh, so if we 
we are doing this for the uh, national level and we consider all the contracts, uh, private sector and government sector, uh, we, can accept, uh, we can see that the uh, consultants are doing uh, somewhat uh, in, in few minutes and uh, so that we can compare that uh, between the uh, practicing daily start and the uh, consultants also. Uh, that's so you think the duration of the procedure that there will be a change in your office? Yeah, definitely. So uh, as you rightly mentioned, I think the BMI of the patient will have a big impact on the final result. But even in a, you know, in a retrospective study in a hospital before categorization, the way that We don't get the uh, patient uh, head ticket uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we don't allow to go the inside of the cath lab also uh, because of the they are uh, following early uh, transmission due to COVID-19 pandemic. We don't uh, let to go inside. We only extract. We can get the only extracted data from the database. That's right. If we are considering the BMI. Uh, and uh, this might be a uh, good correlation, we can get the good, good correlations. Without that, do you think that your results are still valid? Uh, no sir, uh, we can do uh, such things and can uh, further continue of this study, we can, uh, can consider that uh, data also. Yeah. Any questions from the audience? Uh, 
all procedures is the same or is it different? Is it fixed focal distance uh, always? No, in machine uh, 2 there is no focal distance in the 20 cm. It comes from 90, 21, likewise and uh, the other machine it is continuous. 19, 20, 21 focal distance. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Senarakna. I will hold the session for a moment. We will continue after the small interruption. Now, we would like to invite the Vice Chancellor of General Sir John Kotalabal Education University. Major General M. P. Davis to present the mementos as a token of our appreciation to the panel of judges. So please come to the stage. Person of this session, Dr. Sivanandan Sansanand Raja, will be presented by the VC, the Vice Chancellor of General Sir John Kotalawala Defence University, Major General M. B. P. S. Treatment option. 
the goal of radiotherapy is to deliver the maximum dose of radiation to the tumor and minimize the radiation loss to the surrounding tissues. Although this seems like a simple task, it is not because of errors generated from machines and errors that can uh, human cause. For example, target delineation errors, organ motion, errors associated with the radiotherapy machines. As the radiation treatment cannot be reversed and also to compensate for the errors I mentioned, PTV and target volume is reduced. GTV, gross tumor volume, it encloses the visible tumor. CTV, clinical target volume, addresses the microscopic invasions. Enclosing GTV, CTV, enclosing GTV, CTV, and compensating the errors I mentioned previously, PTV is created. Those errors I mentioned are considered as setup errors. It consists of systematic errors and random errors. The systematic error shifts the dose distribution away from the target volume. For example, target delineation errors. This causes the dose to be delivered to an incorrect location for the whole course of treatment. The random error just blurs dose distribution around the target volume. Patient positioning errors can be taken as an example. Therefore, as you can see, systematic error is considerably more dangerous than the random error. Our research is conducted to calculate both of these errors and to recommend the optimum PTT margin to compensate for both systematic and random errors. Different radiotherapy methods and techniques are available to treat cancer patients. One of the such advanced techniques is IMR, Intensity Modulated Radiotherapy. Instead of one large single beam, it uses multiple beamlets to treat the tumor cells. This allows to achieve the goal of radiotherapy in a more promising manner. We collected data from the patients who were treated with this technique. These are our objectives. The first one is to evaluate the systematic error and random error using CBCT of carcinoma prostate patients who were treated with IMRT technique. The other one is to determine the CTV to BTV margin using the calculated setup errors. Methodology. Instead of, in, first, we obtain the ethical theorems for the study from the KDU Ethical Committee. For this study, we selected all the patients who were treated for prostate carcinoma with IMRT technique whose CBCT images were taken daily for the whole course of treatment. There were 35 patients and 889 CBCT images were assessed for this study. The RM oncology information system of the Bayesian True Beam Linear Accelerator is used to gather data for this study. We took dose prescription, age, and translational errors of the patients which were stored in the system. The translational errors mean the vertical, longitudinal, and lateral setup errors of a particular patient. We collected those data and assigned code numbers for all the patients to secure their privacy. Then, data were entered to MS Excel worksheets to give uh, uh, under the given code number. After that, those sheets were transferred to IBM SPSS statistical package for data analysis. These images show the superimposed CBCT images and planning CT images. The automation facility of the Bayesian 2BM DNA is used to superimpose used to superimpose the two image slices first. Then the minor adjustments are done manually. At the right side, bottom of the side, side, you can see different planes of superimposed size used to get, get more accurate shift values. This image shows the treatment couch coordinates. The image column, the first one, 
shows the how its actual position with regards to the uh, tra translational and rotational di uh, directions. The treatment column shows the where shows where the couch should be to irradiate the tumor as planned. The other column shows the difference between those two columns. There were translational uh, these were the translational errors we took for our study. Results. Here you can see the displacement we got for all the directions. As you can see, the majority of the displacements are below 0.3 cm for all the directions. This indicates the margins we kept. Margins kept are almost okay according to the standard margins used in Sri Lanka. Here you can see the displacement for each direction. More than 50% of the deviations are below 0.3 cm for both vertical and longitudinal directions, except the lateral direction. As well, you can see lateral direction shows displacement more than 5%, about 1 cm level. This slide shows the minimum maximum deviation, overall mean, and systematic and random errors we calculated. In here, to get the systematic error for one direction, first the mean value of, the, of that direction for all the patients are calculated. The standard deviation of all those mean values is considered as the systematic error. To get the random error, first the standard deviations of all the shifts are calculated for each patient. The mean values of those standard deviations is considered as the random error. Here, the minimum deviation 0.00 means that from all the translational errors, there have been occasions without any deviation from the plan position for all the directions. Other than that, as you can see, the magnitude of the random error values are high compared to systematic error in all directions. This is comparatively better than having a higher systematic error because it is more dangerous as I mentioned previously. These are the margin formulas we used for our calculations. According to ICR62 formula, the margins we calculated are within the recommended value of 0.3 cm, which is hard to practice in Sri Lanka. Although, according to other recipes, we use margin, margins we use, margins should be increased because all the calculated margins are above 0.3 cm in other two formulas. Other than that, as you can see the margins calculated for lateral direction are always higher than the other two in all formulas. Conclusion. As I mentioned previously, we recommended to increase the CTV to PTV margin for 0.5 cm considering all the recipes. As the lateral margins are higher in all formulas, it is recommended to give special attention while patient positioning for lateral direction. Finally, because we did not consider rotational errors for this study, we recommend it to be considered for future studies. These are other references. At last, I would like to make this an opportunity to acknowledge Dr. R. Vijita, Mr. D. A. Fernando, Dr. Shama Gunatilaka and Mr. R. Turugal for the immense support given to succeed in this project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kolatunga. Very comprehensive talk. The floor is open for questions by judges. Yeah. As the chairperson said, I think a very uh, important study uh, thing we saw the Yes. Uh, just to, uh, have you looked at the intra-patient variability? Now you, you have given the aggregate variability, uh, but what about the intra-patient? Now you have looked at every patient, they have another COVID day. Well, there, have you looked at those, that data? Uh, we took all the, uh, the channels, that means uh, all the fraction data for all the patients. Uh, they have uh, 880 uh, fractions for all the patients. 
person variability and interperson variability. No, we didn't consider that before. That would have been, I think, an interesting part. How do you think your study will help to change the practice in your the current practice? Actually, uh, in Sri Lanka, most of the uh, institutes use uh, ICRU to uh, recommended value. But uh, in uh, other countries, as I uh, so uh, they use uh, their own generated margins uh, using these uh, formulas I use. And uh, if that can be uh, that can be used for our institutes also, then uh, a proper margin can be used, can be generated because uh, if the margins are higher, the complication levels can be increased and uh, if the margin is less, uh, that, then it should be, the tumor might be uh, escaped from the treatment uh, field. Therefore, it is uh, important to generate all margins for all the institutes if possible. Yes. Also, 
that can reduce this uh, PD margins. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker today is Ms. Madhubashini. So she is going to talk about the comparison of ABC2 formula with a semi-automated software-based hematoma volume measurement technique in intracranial hemorrhage. The floor is yours, Ms. Madhubashini. Hematoma as an epilogue. Sorry. 
hematoma volume difference and time interval of difference between scan relief they are revealed a moderate positive correlation. Hemoglobin level at admission demonstrated mild positive correlation with hematoma volume. Significant positive uh, significant mild positive correlation was found between mean HQ value and two sixteen values respectively. Uh, all all these uh, uh, statistical analysis was done by SKS software. In our conclusion, uh, the data approach, uh, the data formula approach demonstrated a significant difference in each uh, in volume measurements when compared to software-based method. The choice of measurement method should be the should depend on a required accuracy determined with uh, regard to its utility in a clinical setting. Therefore, more research is needed to support the implementation of internally designed automatic volumetric measuring method to improve the accuracy and efficiency. With further studies, mean HQ value and HD level at admission can be used as supportive makers in management of ICH. These are the references we use in our research. Finally, <coughs> finally, I would like to convey my sincere gratitude to my research supervisor, Dr. A.S. Palevatta, consultant neurologist, and Dr. Deepa Latinayaka, uh, consultant neurosurgeon at National Hospital Sri Lanka, for sharing their wisdom, time, and expertise throughout the process, and all other uh, all others who have helped us from the beginning to end of this research. Thank you. Thank you, Madam uh, The floor is open for questions by the judges and then audience. Uh, now you, study was carried out about six months ago. Yes, sir. So it was during the quarantine period due to pandemic. So we, uh, we had a uh, on and off job while collecting data. Uh, so what was the time period of Different types of hemorrhage, like BDH, SDH, 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 Hematoma, hematomas, we excluded those, we took the most uh, appealing ones which could be measured. We didn't uh, exclude uh, interparenchymal, but uh, we, uh, we, we did include some of them whose measure, measurement could be acquired.
why would you be interested to see whether there is a difference between this the fashion element and the software based Contribute 
certain amount of work for professional activities and certain amount of work for clinical activities and certain amount of work for research activities. It can be 30, 30, 30, one third, or it can be 50, 50, it can be 40, 60, uh, it can be anything. But at the end of the performance review, then each member will be assessed based on the output of the performance. So research is one part. And also at the same time, the institutes get benefited because research is shared between institutes and the research grants that you, you are going to apply is based on the output because nobody is going to give a research grant without the output. And also at the same time, appointment of adjunct staff members is one of the easiest way to establish this collaboration. So you can uh, identify the specialist in the various other institutes, uh, you know, hospitals, uh, uh, research institutes, or even industries, or even manufacturers. Because there are some uh, papers that discuss about the differences between the machines. So those information, if you have a good collaboration with the manufacturers, you can get more information. There are some confidential information, so manufacturers are normally not giving all the information because it's a part of their intellectual property, but still they can share a lot of information. This is one simple example. Similarly, as uh, clinicians pointed out, this kind of research is very clinically oriented. So without the clinical relevant of the, you know, the, uh, the expert expertise, it's very difficult to formulate any research activities in this in this kind of work. So my conclusion or concluding remark is make a strong collaboration between various institutes and identify a specialist and everyone will be rewarded at the end. It's, it's all collaboration. You, I, I can't do a paper like uh, work like this by myself, even in the you know Western countries. All are collaborative work. So that kind of culture should be established. There are issues everywhere because we are all humans. So humans have same issues everywhere, all over the world, right? That's a human problem. But how we can collaborate? How is there are a lot of factors: personal interactions, diplomatic inter uh, diplomacy, and also the mutual interest. That is the basic for everything. So if you can identify people who have mutual interest then you can easily involve them in the research. So that's uh, the important point. And also, this is uh, finally, your ranking will be, in, you know, that's the way the world, uh, the other universities are ranked highly. Why they are ranked highly? It's because of research and the collaboration. So the, the ranking of universities is mainly based on research output. So teaching is, Anyone can do the teaching, you know. But research is the core uh, component, it should be in the uh, universities and also in the hospitals. For example, I belong to Peter McLeod Cancer Institute, it's a research based cancer hospital. So we have uh, research labs, and all the staff members are encouraged to do research and is evaluated and at the end of the performance review and reward it. So that should be the case to promote research. And finally, so this conference uh, actually uh, done a very good, uh, you know, organized conference. A lot of interesting papers, uh, a lot of interesting talks, and I have seen uh, this is one of the uh, good conference in this part of the world uh, and uh, also well organized and well arranged by the university and the, the staff members uh, and I thank all of them for their hard work uh, and also the, uh, the hospitality. That is one of the fundamental for success uh, because we have to make people happy. That's the only way you can make things work. So thank you for uh, having a wonderful uh, arrangements.
uh, and this uh, finally I, I can ask someone from you also can express your final uh, remarks about this uh, talks today. Yeah, so first of all, I did on behalf of all the judges, I would like to thank uh, the, uh, the KDU uh, University for inviting us to be here. And I think uh, I can't agree more with uh, uh, Dr. Siva. So uh, collaboration is the, always the way to go with research, especially if we want to do meaningful, impactful research. Uh, so there all the comments that we have given is given in the spirit of improving your uh, research. Uh, because I think this presentation is not the last of your research. Of it. You would, all of you all would want to publish that. So when you present this and when you get comments and questions from the audience, it, uh, it gives you things to think about and how to improve your uh, final paper. So I hope, I hope that you will, uh, all of you would take these comments as in a constructive manner and use to uh, improve your research further. So what was presented, all of the, uh, the topics presented, all of the abstracts presented, I think are of very high quality and uh, there is a lot of uh, hard work and uh, thought gone behind them and I think uh, you all should not stop at just uh, presenting here but uh, to continue to improve their work and at least get, some, get a publication so that uh, it can add to the knowledge base. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, I conclude this conference for the technical session. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the technical session one on Allied Health Sciences of the 15th International Research Conference, KDU. Before concluding this session, we would like to call upon the chairperson Dr. Sivanandan Sarsanandaraja to award the certificates to the presenters as a token of appreciation. HNSU Vikramasinghe. M.K. Madhubashini. <laughs> Mr. S.T.H.S. Senaratna. Mr. K. M. A. M. Kulatunga. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to the chairperson of the session, Dr. Sivanandan Sarasanand Raja, and to the presenters for their presence and enlightening ideas. And our sincere thanks also goes to the audience for your participation for this session. With that, we are, we are concluding the technical session one on Allied Health Sciences of the 15th International Research Conference of General Sir John Kothalagara Defense University.